Good day, human Latiosites. This is a Latios Azuril, and happy Ultimate Pi Day. Oh yeah, we are celebrating Pi Day, but it's more than just Pi Day. It is 31415. Since it is 2015 now, and Pi of course is 3.141592653589793238462628 That's all I know off the top of my head. Sorry. But aside from memorizing Pi, which is of course it can be a fun thing to do every once in a while. Of course I'm weird. I like math. Pi. That said, we're going to look at something very interesting. We're going to use Pi, and we're going to try to calculate the size of a Pokeball. But we're going to try to do a little more than just calculate the size of it. But first, we're going to start off with the size, and then we're going to make things a little interesting. So, let's do this. Of course, let's start with the dimensions of the Pokeball so we can do this. So, the way I figured is, because I, don't, I couldn't find an actual approximation for the size of a Pokeball, I assume the diameter of the Pokeball is roughly the size of a human hand, since it can fit in your hand usually. So, the average width of a human hand, as far as I could find in my research, was roughly 8.4 centimeters. So we're going to assume the diameter of a Pokeball on average is 8.4 centimeters. I don't know if it's a little bit off from Pokeball to Pokeball, because, I mean, I figure if they're made in a factory like in Lavare City, perhaps they're all pretty similar in size. So the radius of the Pokeball, we're going to assume, is roughly half of that, which is 4.2 centimeters, since usually a Pokeball, we're going to assume, roughly fits in the palm of your hand. Meaning the width of your hand would be the width of your palm, would be roughly the size of the diameter of the Pokeball. So we're going to be using this to try to solve for the size of the Pokeball overall. So, let's try to look at the size of the Pokeball then. So we have a surface area of a sphere, since a Pokeball is roughly a sphere, I know there's a little knob on the front, or a button, whatever you want to call it. I'm not really going to worry about that, I'm going to consider that relatively negligible. It could make a little difference, but that would just make things a little bit overcomplicated, plus we don't have a size for it, so I'm just going to assume it's a perfect sphere for the sake of simplicity. So the surface area of a sphere is 4 pi r squared, so the surface area of the Pokeball is going to be 4 times pi times the radius, 4.2 squared in square centimeters, which will be roughly 70.56 pi square centimeters, which is equal to 221.671 square centimeters. That seems to make a little sense, considering we're talking about all the area on the outside, and it's going to fit in the palm of your hand. That does seem to make a little sense. However, we're not that that interested in the surface area overall, what we're more interested in is how much space is inside. So we're going to look at the volume of the sphere, or in this case the Pokeball. The volume of the sphere is 4 thirds pi r cubed, so the volume of a Pokeball will be 4 thirds times pi times 4.2 cubed in cubic centimeters. We are using cubic centimeters just to make my life easy. If you would rather calculate this stuff in a different Measurement system, be my guest. If you'd rather use meters, once again, be my guest. So this would be equivalent to about 98.784 pi cubic centimeters, or 310.339 cubic centimeters. For something you have to fit, you want to fit in your pocket, that does make sense. I mean, 310 cubic centimeters, it should fit either on your pocket, in your hand, or on a belt. It seems to make sense, considering you're talking about cubic centimeters, of course. So, the question is, what's so interesting about this? Well, let's look at a Pokemon we have to fit inside this 310 cubic centimeter Pokeball. This is when things get a little fun. So let's take everyone's favorite 398 kilogram float whale. Of course, everyone jokes about it and knows that whale lord's density is actually less than air. Well, that of air, so whale lord can float. That's why it's the float whale, and it can bounce, because it is lighter than air. But, we're going to take its height, which is 1,450 centimeters, approximately. So, the thing is, I'm going to assume, for the sake of simplicity, we're going to assume Whale Lord is cylindrical. Obviously, it's not perfectly cylindrical, but it's close enough to approximate it. 
just so we can get a rough idea of its size. So, also, Whale Lord's diameter in this case isn't really given. The Pokedex won't tell us that. So the rough approximation I found is about 20 feet, which is about 609.6 centimeters. So let's try to calculate the volume of the Whale Lord then. So the radius of the Whale Lord is 304.8 centimeters, which is half of its diameter. So the volume of a cylinder is the height times pi r squared. Therefore, the volume of Whale Lord is going to be 1,450 times pi times 304.8 squared cubic centimeters. This will be roughly 100. 34,709,408 pi cubic centimeters, or 423,202,086.54223 cubic centimeters, which is approximately 423.2 cubic meters. That is pretty big. Obviously it's big, it is the biggest Pokemon of all in size, so it makes sense, I suppose. The question is, how do you fit this giant whale that's 423 million cubic centimeters into a Pokeball that is about 300 centi cubic centimeters? Well, let's take a look at the how much Whale Lord has to shrink. So, here we have a Whale Lord, we need to get this shrink into this small little Pokeball. Let's take the ratio of the size of the Pokeball to the size of Whale Lord. Of course, in this case, we're using volume because we're talking about space. So that'll be 98.784 pi cubic centimeters over 134,709,408 pi cubic centimeters. I am using this in terms of pi because pi will cancel out and I'll make the calculation a little bit easier. So. This will give us 733 billionths. 733 billionths. That is about 0.7 millionths. Therefore, when entering the Pokeball, Whale Lord shrinks to a size less than one millionth of its normal size. That is small. In fact, our picture right here isn't even to scale. That Pokeball is definitely not one millionth of the size of Whale Lord. In fact, it'd be less than a million. Keep in mind, this ratio is assuming Whale Lord were to take up the entire Pokeball. And considering the shape of it, that would not quite work out. You can't fit a cylinder and take up the entire space of a sphere. It doesn't quite work out that way geometrically. So, that is less than a millionth. Whale Lord has to shrink down less than one millionth of its actual size. I want you to imagine something you've seen today. Anything you've seen today. Now imagine one millionth of it. Unless you've seen a million dollars today, I don't think you can really imagine that. I don't know that many people would see a million dollars in the average day. I honestly don't have a million dollars to look at. But imagining one millionth of something is kind of insane. So, Whale Lord shrinks down less than one millionth of its normal size upon entering the Pokeball. How does the Pokeball do this? Pokemon science. I don't know. Maybe there's some kind of a black hole in there? Although the assumption is the Pokemon shrinks inside because the Pokemon's supposed to be contained inside the Pokeball. How do we explain this? Well, I don't think we can. It's kind of a cool thing and all, but there's really no explanation. It's the premise of the whole series. I mean... Pocket monsters. Monsters you can fit in your pocket, I suppose. But hey, you know what? Kinda cool. Whale Lord shrinks to less than a millionth of its normal size when entering the Pokeball. Kind of insane. Thank you, Pi, for helping us answer that. So that said, thank you for watching. As always, like, comment, and subscribe, and have a happy Pi Day. Goodbye.